Gospel and Homily for the 13th Sunday in Ordinary Time. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. As the time drew near for him to be taken up to heaven, Jesus resolutely took the road to Jerusalem and sent messengers ahead of him. These set out, and they went into a Samaritan village to make preparations for him. But the people would not receive him because he was making for Jerusalem. Seeing this, the disciples James and John said, Lord, do you want us to call down fire from heaven to burn them up? But he turned and rebuked them, and they went off to another village. As they travelled along, they met a man on the road who said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus answered, Foxes have holes, and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Another to whom he said, Follow me, replied, Let me go and bury my father first. But he answered, Leave the dead to bury their dead. Your duty is to go and spread the news of the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, sir, but first let me go and say goodbye to my people at home. Jesus said to him, Once the hand is laid on the plough, no one who looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. The Gospel of the Lord. The Danish theologian Soren Kierkegaard wrote about a wealthy woman who felt God was calling her to the convent. She felt she had to give up everything in order to do this with one exception. She owned a small garden which meant the world to her. It was a place where she could be alone and at peace. She, she could give up everything except relinquish the key to this secret garden. There was no secret garden for Jesus except the Garden of Gethsemane. It was there where he sweated blood before his sacred passion. Resolutely taking the road to Jerusalem, as the reading says, is another way of saying that in response to his Father's will, Jesus had chosen the way of the cross. There was no going back. Being snubbed by the Samaritans didn't help. The Samaritans and the Jews were often at loggerheads, and when Jesus was making for Jerusalem the Jewish capital, the Samaritans weren't at all pleased. In consequence, Peter and John suggested they ask God to instantly rain down fire from heaven to burn them up. But Jesus rebuked the apostles and insisted this was not God's way of resolving conflict. This was not the way of the cross, but it was the way of the world. In taking up our crosses and following Jesus, we also need to be careful about making over-the-top pledges to our Lord, whilst at the same time not having the wherewithal to carry them out. One man said, I'll follow you wherever you go. Jesus, however, knew that he was biting off more than he could chew. Do we sometimes make exaggerated promises to our Lord, whilst at the same time knowing it would be beyond our reach to carry them out? The second man, who was called by Jesus, said, Let me go and bury my father first. Jesus replied, leave the dead to bury their dead, meaning that the man's family was already spiritually moribund. Here, the man couldn't rise above the expectations of his spiritually defunct family. Now, following Jesus for us will often require us to stand back and be our own person, despite family pressures. But it will also require us to stand up for what is right. Our family should not get in the way of that. Now, from the, the news yesterday, we know that Roe and Wade has gone by the board in America. They say that most pressure to end a pregnancy comes from families. That is, grandparents, parents in particular, partners, 
That makes these family members complicit in the overall decision. As a result, wicked decisions are often made regarding the life of their unborn. It's shirking the cross of Jesus in a really big way. St. John Paul II once said that believing in Jesus means accepting what he says even when it runs contrary to what other people are saying, and that includes those of our own kith and kin. When St. Thomas More was awaiting execution for his faith, his family pleaded with him to take a softer option than his conscience would allow. But he chose the way of the cross. He had laid his hand to the plough and he wasn't looking back. So, as Jesus fixed his eyes resolutely on Jerusalem, we fix our eyes firmly on him. We surrender to him the keys of our secret gardens and allow nothing or no one, whether they be family, friend or foe, to come between us and our following of him. Now thank you all for listening and God bless you all.